In this video, we're gonna take a look at the absolute basics of defining what we would call procedures in x86. You can think of a procedure just like a function in x86. It's basically the representation of a function. We saw that we could call functions through C programs and we saw that we could interact with system calls. And now we're gonna see how we can create functions in x86, which actually requires us to have a little bit more insight towards how functions are really structured and how they're storing data on the stack. I'm gonna start by showing you a really simple example, which is just to set some data in some registers, call a function, and return back from it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define a function, which is basically just done with another label. I'm gonna call it add to, and all it's gonna do is it's gonna to add together what's in the EAX and EBX register, and then it's going to return back using this RET keyword. So this returns back to the location where the function was called from. And I'll show you this in detail when we go into the debugger. I'll show you what that structure actually looks like. So to start off, we're going to move something into EAX and we're gonna move something into EBX. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this function using the same call keyword that we saw for our C functions. So we say call with add to. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to preserve the value of EAX in EBX. I'm gonna move into EAX1 and then I'm gonna do an interrupt so that I can exit the program. So that's the exit system call, right? Now let me show you what happens when we run this program and we'll describe exactly how this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to assemble and I'm gonna compile this code with GCC and I'm gonna go into my debugger. Now, just like as I'm going through this, it doesn't matter if you use uh, GDB or not. I'm just using GDB because it's, it's sort of what I have like in my head, so that's why I'm using it. But you can use a LD, like the linker type method that we saw before, and that would work totally the same for this type of process as well. Now what I'm doing is I'm breaking up main, and I'm gonna run my application, and I'm going to step into my application, I'm gonna step into this call. And one of the main things that I wanna give you context on is how do we know where to go back to once this function ends? Cause it gets this return keyword and then it takes us back where we're supposed to be, but it almost feels a little bit like magical how that generally works. And what I'm gonna show you is that that data actually exists on the stack. So the way that we can really see that is we could take a look at the X over X and then ESP, which is our, um, our stack pointer or our stack pointer register. Now, actually what I really have to do is I have to say info register ESP to get the value of it. And then what I would do is I do X over X. This will tell me the hexadecimal value that's located at the address that I put in, which in this case, I'll put in the address that's shown in my stack pointer. And we get this value. So remember that the stack pointer is pointing to the current available location in memory. So what happens is, when you run the call, what it does is it places the return address onto the stack. And we can verify this by taking a look at this value, 8049182. If I go over into my code, you'll see that 8049182 is the next line of code that comes after this function. What this return instruction does is it takes the return address at ESP and it brings us back to it. So it brings us back to this address here, 8049182. So it would essentially just pop off the value onto the instruction, uh, the, um, the program counter, I think it is, the, the program counter PC register, right? And you'll see this pretty clearly. So when we add these values together, we do the return, it does actually take us back there. And that's how that's doing it. It's taking that value from the stack and moving it into the program counter to take us to that particular location in memory. And if you're familiar with computer security at all, you'll know that there are exploits around this type of idea. We can actually write code into memory in some cases through a buffer overflow or something like that. We can actually overwrite that stack return address and return somewhere else. And typically we would return to libc or something like this to execute code. So that's one way that we can actually exploit an application is by taking over or controlling that return address. So if you're interested in the world of security, that's where that exploit is coming from. It's taking over that return address in assembly. And you'll see here that the rest of the program flows you know, rather intuitively. So we could just step through, we can interrupt and we're done. No sorts of problems. If I were to run this code just normally, right? We'd be able to see that it does run you know, the exact way that we would expect it to. If I echo out my exit code, it's the result of adding the two numbers together. 
which in this case is, of course, 5. So this hopefully gives you a little bit more of an intuition around how the general idea of functions work in x86. What I'm going to do is I'll end off this video here. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can actually work with putting data onto the stack to pass into functions, which would be the way that we would typically pass parameters into functions, which you'll see in like assembly code. If you were to decompile you know, code into assembly, you would see this sort of process happening. So we'll discuss that in a little bit more detail. So thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.